hey friends, we made our own broth and it's done. We're gonna jar it up and we're gonna can it. And um, I'll take you back to yesterday and I'll show you what all I put in it and then we'll jar it up together. All right, got some celery greens from the garden. Just put them in here. Some random other greens from the garden. Looks like some kale, Swiss chard, beet greens. And bones from the turkey. So this broth is gonna be like a vegetable bone broth kind of thing. And I just use it interchangeably with whatever. If the recipe calls for chicken broth, I use this. Calls for vegetable broth, I use this. Doesn't matter to me. It's all the same. It's all frozen. <laughs> we'll add the water here in a sec. Some onion. And garlic scapes. Just kidding. That's onion. That's onion tops. So. That's what I was looking for in the freezer. And I was like, where's my onion top? So I didn't label the bag. So now I have to go find my garlic scapes instead. Onion. Found them. You to remember they're in a smaller bag and they're cubes. These are garlic scapes that we um, process together, froze together, basically. We'll do five. All right, pepper and salt. salt here. Um, we'll probably end up adding even more than this. Just to, We're going to add it to taste, but we'll start with that. Vinegar. So a little bit of apple cider vinegar is supposed to help draw out all the good stuff from the bones. So, oh, can you see? Just a couple swigs. The taste and smell, like, that cooks out. You don't even notice it. And let's get the water. Oh yeah, let's turn this. I'm gonna do, I'll do 350 just to get everything warm and thawed out and then we're gonna turn it down to 200. And we're just gonna let it sit, let everything thaw and then we'll be able to stir it up. All right, here's what we're working with. So I'm just gonna scoop out with this fine mesh strainer. We'll be sure to get all the liquid out of this. So I turn the heat off to this. So this is cooled down completely. Okay. <laughs> My pressure canner can fit eight, so we're going to start with eight. And we're just going to do this for every single one of them. I don't have a fat separator, so we are just going to keep the fat on top, the oil, whatever. One inch headspace. So we're going to go to right about there. there and do it again. Lovely. Let's clean the rims. All right, and I already felt these with my finger to make sure there weren't any breaks or cracks. And now we'll put our lids on. New lids, used rings. Just a finger tight. I've got my pressure canner back here, so we're gonna stick those in the pressure canner. And uh, I think it was 20 minutes. I have, I have the manual somewhere, so I'm gonna reread that real quick and stick these in. There we go. Three quarts of, wa of water at least has to be in here. No matter what's in here, no matter how many jars are in here, at least three quarts of water have to be in here. All right, it says pressure can. 20 minutes for chicken broth. Well, this is turkey broth, but broth inside of pints is 20 minutes. We 
Let me insert it jars. Okay, it's warming. Okay, so I did that warming before. I added the liquid and then I I turned it off because I accidentally pushed the button too far and I couldn't get it. So that's why we're warming again, but I want to be able to just skip the warming step. And then because I want to I want to go to the fill I want to say fill jar. So, sure, I guess I guess we're just going to Yeah, nothing's working. So we're just going to wait till it's done warming up even though it's already warm. All right. It beeped at me twice, so fill jars, done. Now it says heat, make sure it's on, locked, pressure regulator is off, and it is, and now it's gonna do its thing. Okay, pressure canner is going, it's gonna heat and then vent and then prompt me to put the pressure regulator on later. So I'll just wait for it to beep at me and do that. Oh, I forgot to record. It said put regulator on. So I did. On can. You can't see because it's covered up. And now it's cutting down to 20 minutes. You needed to pressure pin those. And then it's going to take a while to come down to pressure before this is safe to open. Okay, a few things to talk about. One, whenever you're making bone broth, if you boil, not boil, if you simmer your bones for a really, really long time, like day and a half, two days, whatever, the bone is breaking down a lot. And if you drink your bone broth, which is perfectly safe and fine, but if you do do that and then you drink your bone broth and you get an upset stomach or nauseous or headache or fatigue or, or anything like that, um, that could be you having a histamine reaction to your broth. Which, I mean, it's not going to kill you, it's not like harmful, it just makes you feel like crap and your body's having a reaction to that. Um, that happened to me. So when I made broth, I don't know, a, a while ago, I had it go in simmering for like a day and a half, two days, something like that, a real long time. I just wanted to be, I wanted to be a really strong, concentrated broth. And then I was drinking it and I was like, oh, you know, I just feel really bad. So I looked it up and um, so yeah, according to Google, it's a histamine reaction and to avoid that from happening, you would just cook your broth for less amount of time. So for me today was um, less than 24 hours, so it was eight, hold on, math, 14 hours. And you saw the color, that was pretty good, pretty good color uh, broth, and I tasted it earlier and it's good. So we got plenty of flavor in the broth. And um, so I had some earlier this morning just to see like if it was still too long, if it was gonna upset my stomach and nothing. I didn't have any sort of feeling like that. So now I know don't go a whole 24 hours or more. And then if that still bothers you, if you still have some sort of reaction from just 14, 18 hours or so of slow cooking, then you can try pressure cooking it for like in your Instapot, pressure cook it for an hour or 30 minutes or somewhere along there and try it that way. And that way you don't have to babysit a big old thing overnight either. And um, it's done quick and easy. So Things to think about and be aware of whenever making your own bone broth or buying it from the store and drinking it. If it upsets your stomach, you're having a reaction. It's not going to kill you. It's just not comfortable. So, And then if you do make bone broth that's too strong like that, um, I still used mine in soup and gravies and stews and whatever you, you, would, you would use broth in to cook your rice. And when I cooked it in something, I didn't have any reaction to it. It was just drinking it straight. So if that does happen to you, you can still use your broth. It's probably not going to affect you. Um, so, we made vegetable bone broth with turkey bones. You can make vegetable broth with just vegetables. You can make a bone broth with just bones, whatever kind of bones you want to use um, from any animal, whatever. Whatever you got, you can use it and use it interchangeably. That's how I do anyways. If recipe calls for vegetable broth or bone broth or chicken broth or beef broth even, um, I use whatever broth I have and it's usually from chicken bones or turkey bones because, I don't know, I don't really buy beef on a bone. So that's what I have and that's what I use. And you can put any kind of vegetable in there you want or none at all, whatever you want to do. Um, so like the garlic and the onion and the celery greens and the salad greens, just whatever scraps you have. If you have something that's like some carrots that not moldy, but like, yeah, I don't really, you know, they're getting a little soft or you have some celery that's not, you know, optimal, um, 
texture. Though <laughs> you can throw it in here too. You can add some herbs in, like rosemary and thyme or sage or whatever you got. Um, so you can you can you can put a whole bunch in, or you can be a little bit more basic. I think mine was kind of like in between, not basic but not um, a lot either. So, anyways, I think that's all I have to say. And um, if you don't have a roaster pan, you can use a pan and put it in the oven. Just do it during the day, probably not overnight, just in case. Um, do it in your Instapot, slow cooker, uh, what, whatever you have that you can just set it, heat up, walk away. I mean, you can do it on your stove too, even. You can just, um, I don't know, boil it and make it go real fast that way. Whatever you got, you can make broth and it's really easy. And it, like, it's, you're, you're using things that you might not have used otherwise, like the celery greens. I wouldn't have used celery greens for anything else. Turkey bones, I wouldn't have used them for anything else. So you're usually, you're like literally using every part of something that you have by just making a broth with it too. For broth, you cannot water bath can it on the stove. You have to pressure can it. So that's what we're doing right here. So before I got that, I froze it. Um, if you have extra freezer space, you can just use, use jars. Like I'll save like spaghetti jars, spaghetti sauce jars and peanut butter jars and, and all that, like actual glass jars. And um, so it doesn't have to be like a new lid, new ring or anything like that whenever you're freezing. And you just repurpose a jar and throw it in the freezer and it's good. Uh, but give it some extra space because when it freezes, it'll expand and it'll break your jar if you don't give it extra space. So real easy. This is actually our first time pressure canning. So we're doing it with broth and fingers crossed. But I'll see you back whenever the next step on that is. Um, it's counting down 15 minutes left on the pressure canner and then we'll get to take them out soon. Well, once it's completely depressurized. Oh, it says cool. Yay. Almost done. All right, according to the manual, it'll say cool. And then when it's done cooling, which could take up to an hour and a half, it'll do a countdown and it'll let us know when it's done and safe to open. So we're not gonna open it now because it's still very pressurized and that's how people get injured. We are going to wait until, I guess it counts down and then beeps and then it, oh, right here. And then it says it's done. And that's when it's safe to open. So we're just gonna wait. Okay, it beeped once and then now it's just this. I'm still not going to open it yet. Oh, that's up. And this usually turns this way to open. So I'm guessing that'll go down whenever it's ready. So yeah, I'm just going to leave it. Okay, it still doesn't say done, but it's been like two hours and this did drop. I see some steam coming out of it, but not much. So I'm wondering if, it's, if we should open it now it says right here wait till this is dropped if it says done and it's dropped if it says done but it hasn't dropped you have to wait but it's dropped it doesn't say done Ugh. but it's been like yeah it's been two hours so I don't know kind of nervous all right let's do this Oh, it was okay. Okay. We're safe. It's all good. Let me get these. And then we'll get these out. Ooh. Nice. And over here. We made cranberry sauce and cranberry juice as well. Today. So keep an eye out for those videos if that interests you. Ooh, I heard a little lid pop which is a good sound. And then we got a mess to clean up and then hopefully have a nice relaxing evening. You can see the fine mesh strainer didn't get every little bit out and that's fine. And then the stuff at the bottom here could be just um, a bone marrow or collagen or something. I don't know. Well, I'm gonna finish with these and then I will reload this up and then freeze a little bit of broth if I have to as well. All right, here's the next day. I think they all sealed. None of them have a bubbly top and I don't wanna to mess with the lid too much. 
Ah. Oh, ignore the mess. I am uh, making a mess, so just ignore it. So that's awesome. Got, let's see, 16, yeah. I'm not tugging, I'm just like, kind of like running my fingers across the top just to see if it lifts off easily. Okay, so this is my first time pressure canning was with this. That's why I was going through like all the steps of the pressure cooker with you because it was also helping me say it out loud and do it with you. And so I thought, let's start with something easy like broth in our pressure cooker. This is great. This is awesome. We did a great job. Now my only other problem is um, I don't know where I'm going to store 16 jars of broth. So. <laughs> so yeah, here's the pantry. It's not um, very large, so I don't have anywhere else to put canned goods because um, in the kitchen all the cabinets and everything and drawers are filled with dishes and cooking equipment. So, Oh, and stay tuned. We're going to make something with these Oreos. They're going to be good. But yeah, so I'm guessing, try to squeeze them in right there. All right, there they are. So I heard you're not supposed to stack jars on top of each other when you can them. So they're single layer, which is not optimizing space and kind of bothers me, but we're gonna follow the rules. And so I got things just kind of packed on top of each other, which I don't like, because I like to be able to see what I have, which is how I had it before, but that's okay. This is what we got to work with. So thanks for watching. And the, so I had the roaster pan go overnight. And when we got up in the morning, Evan's like, what's that smell? And I was like, I don't know. It smells kind of good. He's like, yeah, it smells like ramen. Like you cooking ramen already? <laughs> and it was just a turkey vegetable bone broth. But yeah, it made the whole house smell good. So it was quite pleasant. Anyways, I'll pop up some videos for you to watch over here somewhere. And thanks for being here. And I'll see you next time. Bye.